All right. Uh, the new show is called Chicago Code, and there is nothing like it at all on television right now. It's almost like a cable show that's been brought over to network TV, Chicago Code, that's Fox Mondays, 9 o'clock. Jennifer Beals, let's bring her in. Jennifer is in studio with us, and the show is Chicago Code here. I hope you take this as a compliment. I feel like this is a like a cable show that has moved over to network television. Yes, I, I do too. It's interesting. And there's no swearing or anything. No, there's no swearing. feel like yeah. there's an authenticity still. But I feel like it's a show for adults, which I think network TV got away from mm -hmm. for a while. It got kind of either silly dramas or reality shows, and they kind of gave up great television. And this show that you have is a complicated show that I think adults would sit down well, and watch. Well, thank you. Thank you. I know that it's certainly something that you have to pay attention to, right. or else you'll miss details. Well, we had one of your uh, castmates in here, Delroy. Oh, fantastic. Delroy Lindo. And yeah. I'd only seen, when he came in, only two episodes have been mm -hmm. out, and I explained that everything was going on. It was about corruption and that he was in the center of the corruption, kind of the bad guy, and he was quite angry and said, no way, I'm not buying into that. I feel like I'm playing a good character. Right, that's what feel... they all have to tell themselves. Yeah, and he because was... We can't take away their identity. He turned on me fast, and he is, and I know that you know him, if he smiles at you, it's a very nice moment, and then when he's not happy, the whole room changes. <laughs> He's an amazing guy that way. Luckily, he has always been really sweet with me, well, and, and we've had a really great time, and I love him dearly, and he, I love working with him. You could tell why he's uh, such a great performer, because he has a commanding about him, and he's great on, on the show, by the way. Yes. And I do still see him as evil, but I can't tell him that to his face anymore. But I, but I do now know where he comes from with that, that every character... You know, he says he's in the same system like you are. He's doing it his way. You're doing it your way. But right. you, you happen to think that you're on the side of, of yeah, good. Yeah, well, I show. think the truth of the matter is, is they're mm -hmm. both really complicated characters. Right. You know, I think that um, his character does a lot of good. There are a lot of great things that he does. Um, and I think that there are probably some moments where Teresa does things that she shouldn't do. Right. And, and voices opinions that she shouldn't voice and i think that's what makes for an interesting character is when you show the complexities because nobody's all good nobody's all bad there's always something you know that makes them a little bit uh, more complex well isn't that interesting too because we're seeing this and we should know but it's in our own politics where we're acting like okay obama's here it's going to be a, a a quick change and things are right, and we saw that right. right away he starts making compromises because he yeah. believes it's for the greater good and it 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 just gets so quickly complicated yes yes when you have to serve so many people and i can't even imagine what he learned once he really got to the white house how weird All it really yeah, how much stuff is really going on but still that doesn't excuse not going after the people in the financial it's unbelievable, isn't it? No, it is really unbelievable. And it just feels like, and even now when we see what's happening in Japan, we I don't ever remember a time of feeling so hopeless. Like before, it felt like this was a time that the American people could jump together and do something. And now it almost feels like we don't even have the resources to help people. to help when we want to. No, you I know? know. I mean, I my my family is very close to a lot of people in Japan. My mom speaks Japanese. My brother uh, worked in Japan for. Uh, at least a year as a journalist and and I've worked there quite a bit and, and, and spent a lot of time there and so we have a lot of friends there and you feel so you know like you said really helpless as to you know be able to um, extend yourself to right. the situation and the best that I can do is contact the people that I know and love and invite them to come and stay with me and to, to leave the country and it's very difficult for them because that's not how they're brought up. That's right. not the culture. You know, the culture is to duty and to helping one another and staying there until everybody's okay. Yeah. You know, so. They seem to, as the people themselves, they, they seem to handle it incredibly well. I mean, these are difficult and you don't see a lot of panic and you don't see a lot of people taking advantage of the situation. It seems like they're all pulling for each other. It there. seems like, well, it's a very um, coherent society in mm -hmm. many ways. Like people are really taught to, 
um, work for one another, mm. you know, to it's not just about you at all. There's not that same kind of individualistic thing that we have in the United States, which is great for so many things. But in a situation like that, or even with the minors that were stuck, right. you know, you need to work for one another. That it's not just about you and you, you really need to help one another. Um, but I just feel that it's so hard because I feel like if you have the opportunity to leave mm -hmm. and to protect your family, then, then I would hope that you, you would, but, but that's me with my American yeah. mind. And maybe that's just a very selfish place to come from. But I, I remember being here in the city after nine 11, even the first time I left the city was Thanksgiving. I almost felt guilty mm. leaving. I felt right, like, right. wow, this feels strange to be out of it. I feel like I need to be back in the middle of that. So I can kind of understand where people are saying, we're not going to let this change us. Right. I, even though it's horrendous. And uh, at that time, I was here during that yeah. time as well. My, my husband and I were supposed to be uh, at the World Trade Center that, that morning. That morning. That morning. Wow. And we were supposed to be at, um, at the stock exchange in time for the opening bell because we were going to take a tour of the stock exchange because at that time you could do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this little voice said to me, you know, let him sleep in when I woke up to go you know, when we woke up to, to go downtown. I, actually, I woke up before he did, and this little voice said, let him sleep in. So we slept in. And to spend the time in the city um, during that period of time was uh, so painful and mm -hmm. so extraordinary and so empowering in a lot of ways. And yeah. I, I, hate, I hate to use that word because it's so overused. But like we were talking about, seeing people come together and help one another. Right. You know, to extend themselves because they know how much you're in pain and you know how much they're in pain and you're just trying to help one another. And, yeah. and it was just a, um, I feel really grateful to have been here during that period. No, of time. I'm the same exact way. And it's very odd because I've made friends fr from that exact time that are still my friends in a, and we have this odd bond mm -hmm. from just getting involved in whatever things that, you know, small things that needed to be done. Right. But there was a time where people were, were reaching out about being, human beings with each other right. and then you get out of that and you get back to yes. you know life yeah. when you think well all right the world has changed but it's very weird i guess it goes back and forth and uh even in your television show uh chicago is, is a city that's come back in so many ways uh you know money came back into the town some problems economically again it's like we always go back mm -hmm. and forth yeah, and the, the history of the city goes back and forth. You yeah. have, like, the corruptors, and then you have the reformers, and you have the right. corruptors and the reformers, and there's this huge cycle that goes back and forth. And at some point when you're younger, you're thinking, okay, this is the world this, and this is the way <laughs> life is, you know? Yes. And then you get woken up to it. But then the oddest thing of all is that if you read any history, these aren't new stories. You no, know what but I mean? the new stories, though, are the toxic chemicals. Yeah, that's the new story. Those are the things that have been unleashed into the marketplace that need now to be controlled. We didn't have that back mm -hmm. then. You know, there were commercials for DDT during the 50s with housewives spraying the whole house, right. keeping the whole house safe and clean, you know, and, and it's that advent of toxic chemicals now, I think, that we have to be really mindful of and start to legislate and control. I think that's the dragon that's coming an, up out of the ground. Isn't it amazing? And that stuff is in the water, it's in the grass. You know what's really weird, too, is they used to come around and spray in the summer with those things, and we kids used to run through the fog like it was yes, fun yes. we would be running through I've heard, this i've heard the story insane stuff yeah so uh but it's also very interesting too that you even bring up the chemicals because I, I talked about this before on the show about how food tasted so different from when i was a kid that watermelons didn't taste like watermelons and i got calls from so many people who are farmers who said no the the, the stuff still exists you, you're just not getting it at the supermarket oh. so that took right. me on this thing where you could go out and still find real food that aren't touched by chemicals. Right. And the weird thing is they taste so much better, but they don't look better. They look right, like, right, right, you know. Right. They don't look like your, your fantasy version of, right. the, of the watermelon. Right. So we have, the chemicals have given this wonderful wax fruit and vegetables that look better, but right. are far worse. Right. And you think that there's some amount of convenience or something that comes from right. the toxic chemicals, but really in the long run, you're paying for it. So what got you involved in, in 
that kind of stuff? What got you involved even thinking about? Well, you know, I, I was involved with recycling mm-hmm. and, and I started to do a little bit more research and I, and I started seeing that, um, you know, that there's a problem with repurposing. At first you think, oh, that's a really great idea. But there's certain things you have to be mindful of how you repurpose them. Like tires, for example. Mm-hmm. Tires, when they're in a landfill, are very strictly regulated for health and safety reasons. But because of a loophole in recycling laws, you can repurpose those tires, crumble them up, and put them in a child's playing field. And all of a sudden they don't, they're not regulated anymore. Right. And that's not okay because they contain the, the t- what's good for a tire is not good for a child. Yeah. They contain carbon black. They contain all kinds of known and suspected carcinogens. Um, and it's, it's just not a good idea. Like there are certain products that you can't repurpose materials for. And there are certain things that that's, that's perfectly fine for. But then it started me going down the rabbit hole and looking at the 1976 Toxic Substances Control Act, which uh, the well-intentioned, I'm sure, was sure. not a control act at all. What it did is it unleashed 62,000 untested chemicals into the marketplace, 20,000 more of which have been added to that list. And and we just have not verified that they're safe for anybody, much less children who, because they are younger and um, they're at greater risk and more sensitive, sensitive um mm-hmm. To these, to these chemicals, and we have to protect our kids, and we have to protect ourselves, but particularly children. Um, you know, there are, there are toxic bills, chemical bills that come out um, trying to control toxic chemicals that are in children's toys or children's right. products, but the, the definition of a children's product is also incredibly important because, uh, you know, I think Maine has adopted the definition that it's anything with which a child comes into contact where they could be affected by those chemicals. So that could be anything. So like synthetic turf with a rubber crumb infill, Mm -hmm. then you have to categorize under that, um, that bill so that you protect children because the crumb, um, uh, is not uh, stable. You know, I know if you, if you've watched the Super Bowl when the ball hits the synthetic field, the the black stuff comes up and that's how you know where the ball went out. So because it's not stable, like young kids, um, you know, not the NFL players, but right. young kids then come in contact with this stuff. And and we're, we're, I just think we need to be precautious when it comes to our our children's health. And, and we can't have that kind of it, repurposing. It's, it's amazingly us and it's amazingly hard to keep up on this. But I, I have seen this. And I try to tell people about it all the time. These smart consumers is the only way to turn this stuff around, that the large corporations will react if the people say, here's the kind of products that we want. Absolutely. And, and there are these companies that yeah. have come up with alternatives. Yeah. You know, I would not want to put anybody out of business. Right. You know, at all, especially in this economic cycle. That would be the last thing that I would want to do is to have somebody out of a job. Um, but the fact is that there are alternatives and and the companies have the research teams and the resources yeah. to make a change. And, and I think that a lot of them are willing to do that. No, the, everybody is willing to do it if they can make a profit at it. But <laughs> yeah. what they don't want to do is like, hey, we've heard, we've worked real hard on this, but you guys are still going out and buying the cheap shit. Then they get upset. The con- if the consumers take it upon themselves, and now with the internet, there's so many ways to right. yes, to get true. involved. But if you just purchase uh, mindfully. Mm-hmm. The corporations will react immediately without even thinking about because their way of thinking is, oh, that's the way the marketplace has shifted. Yes, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. But so, I think what people do mm-hmm. is they presume that the government will keep them safe. Right. They presume that their schools will keep them safe, that their churches will keep them safe. And, and everybody's looking to each other. Yeah. Well, they did it. Oh, well, they did it. It must be safe rather than using a little bit of critical thinking to investigate it for themselves and just to start asking questions, you know. I, I believe that 100% too. Yeah. But I also think that there needs to be, and I'm sure they're, they're out there, just websites with the information that start to say, as consumers, as Americans who care, who want things to happen, let's start moving this direction, let's move in this direction. And the corporations and the government too. I'm telling you, a congressman, if he finds out that the people in his district suddenly care about Somalia, he'll start yelling about Somalia. Right, right. They, it's so weird. We're, we, we're trying to get them to lead us, but 
we literally have to say, here's how we need you to start moving on. Absolutely. And all these people do it. And you know, the, one of the things that I love about Chicago mm -hmm. is that everybody in the city feels that they have access to their alderman. Right. And, and so on any day of the week, you can walk into the alderman's office and say, this concerns me. That's the only city in which I've lived where people feel connected to the mm -hmm. people that represent them in a very uh, visceral way, almost. And because there's also something to be said for thinking critically about what you read on the Internet. Oh, absolutely. You know, so you have to be really mindful of, of the information you get on the Internet. But even in culling that information yeah. and asking questions and then going to your your representative and saying, here's what I've read. These are the questions I have. This is what concerns me about what I've read. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure as to the veracity of it, but this is concerning to me, and, and, I, and I want to talk about it. I want this to be an issue for you as well. I agree with that 100%, and sometimes you can get it even better in urban areas. In my street, everybody knows what's going on in my street. If I walk out on the block, everybody has opinions about this or that. When I lived in the suburbs, we kind of waved each other and, you know, go into our houses, but you are right when it's the local guy, it's much more important to you than what even the president's decision is. Yeah, because that they guy runs your neighborhood. that area. Yeah. And from that area, it's like Obama used to say, it's block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood, yeah. you know, community by community, because that's really how it starts. And he came out of Chicago. He came out of yes. that uh, background. Uh, how are the people of Chicago feeling about the show? Are they... Well, I know that the CPD is really happy about it. Yeah. I think they get a kick out of it. Yeah. And I think people are really enjoying the show. Yeah. You know, I think it's fun for people to see their city, and it's such a beautiful city. And You grew up there? Yes, yes. I'm really proud to be from Chicago. First time um, to live back in Chicago after you left? Yes, or, yes, yes. That's got to be strange, right? Um, at first, it was very yeah. bizarre. You know, it was really um, a flood of memories every time I drove or walked down the street. Uh, but now... You know, I have a new identity with the city. You know, I'm no longer 18 by a long shot, so it's it's a new relationship to the city. When and, you start shooting again for the next season? Well, um, your mouth to God's ear. It's I don't. I would imagine. Oh, they got to pick this show up. I hate oh, when I, I get so. I get involved in a show and I get. <laughs> I, it always annoys me. Yeah, I I I don't know. Well, we'll out mm -hmm. in May. Okay. You know, we're doing well, um, but you know, it's a it's you, know, you never know what's going to happen and. I think um, so far they're they're optimistic and people have been very very supportive of the show. All right, it's a, it's a smart show. It's a good show. Great actors in it. Uh, the guy who uh, Jason Clark is. Oh it my that, gosh, he's magnificent! What a throwback he is. Everything about him yeah. reminds me of the forties. Yeah, it's yeah. really. Yeah, he's a man. Yeah, Philip Marlowe type stuff. It's so it's a terrific show. Great people in it. I've got a cupcake place for you in Chicago called Molly's that they want to take care of you the next time. That Molly's? I Molly's. I've been there. It's, Where is it? It's uh, Lincoln Park, I believe, is the neighborhood that it's in. Yes. The, I know I've been there. I've been there already a couple of times. It's uh, the little place that has swings on yeah. the... Yeah. Oh, swings. It's got like little swings inside. It looks like a Oh, no. A that's a new place. House. I'm right. ready. I'm, so they're going to take care of you there. Thank you. And they, they're, they're all big fans of yours. Thank you. But thank you so much for coming in. My it was pleasure. great to talk My to you. My pleasure. And it's interesting to have somebody come in that can talk about anything. Oh, that's <laughs> sweet. Not just show business. So it's Thanks. fabulous. Thanks so much. Okay, my pleasure.